So we've just seen some amazing applications of VR and XR for consumers. But let's not forget, XR is not just about consumers. It's also about business. From design and engineering, to training, to in-store retail, to online sales, marketing, and support, across VR, AR, MR, all the R's, XR, the use cases for XR are basically endless. Microsoft is a company that plays in these areas, and I'd like to introduce and bring up to the stage Brandon Bray from Microsoft. Let's go. Knock him dead, buddy. It's the fifth century BC, and Simonides is doing what Greek poets do best. He's at a party. After giving a toast to a Thessalian nobleman, he steps outside for a conversation. And just then, the banquet hall collapses, entombing everyone inside in shards of marble. The ensuing search and rescue is unable to identify anyone. And frantic to figure out who is inside, Simonides seals himself to the situation, closes his eyes, and looks back around the table as he was giving a toast and sees each person where they sat. In that moment, he recalled everyone who was inside and the method of loci was born. It's the same technique we use when we're looking for our keys and tracing our steps in our home. We as humans are spatial creatures and evolution has made spatial memory one of our strongest capabilities. We also live in two universes, a universe where we have atoms and we have atoms and laws of physics, and then a, a universe where we have bits and digital logic. These correspond to realities, a physical reality and a digital reality and mixed reality brings these together and blends them together. Mixed reality allows me to place a hologram in a room and walk around it, interact with it, and engage with it as if it were really there. It also allows me to take objects, people, and places from the real world and bring them into the digital world to create entirely new experiences. At Microsoft, the journey for mixed reality began with HoloLens. HoloLens is the first holographic self-contained computer. It contains technology called inside-out tracking, which allows you to freely move around a space without pre-configuring the room or having to set up external sensors. And it enables amazing experiences. It allows you to travel to new places, both real and imagined. One of the experiences in the store today lets you go back to prehistoric times and see dinosaurs. You can see a titanosaurus at full scale, and you could walk around an auditorium as large as this and still stay in the experience. HoloLens also lets you see your world in new ways. One of the more common things developers do today is they use the ability of spatial understanding to measure things. You can look at furniture in your room, and you can also you know, look at art before you place it in your house. And for business, it brings an entirely new dimension to solving commercial problems. With that, you know, we've seen training experiences go from weeks down to just days. And it's developers here that are making all of this possible. It's with great tools come the possibility that we can explore new things. And it's tools like Unity that are making this possible. If you haven't tried HoloLens, we have one of the developers building an app experience here at uh, Vision today. And I am, encourage all of you to come downstairs to the exhibition hall to try it out. Now, in mixed reality, we have the ability to take holograms and apps, these are synonymous. Holograms, when you place them in your room, you can leave, come back to the same place, and it's still there. In the digital reality, 
we can still do the same thing and use spatial understanding. This is Cliff House. This is the Windows operating system for mixed reality. It allows you to place and arrange your apps around this space. You can create a gaming basement, a productivity room, and you can also go back and create a entertainment balcony. All of this is just the beginning for what we're seeing in mixed reality on Windows. The technology that made HoloLens possible is inside-out tracking, and we're bringing that to an entirely new class of devices, immersive devices. The first of these, the Acer Windows Mixed Reality Development Edition headset, is already in the hands of developers. And our partnership with Unity is very strong. We continue to collaborate to improve workflow so that content creators like all of you can bring mixed reality content to all of the devices that are available, both HoloLens and immersive devices. And it's my pleasure to tell all of you who are here in the audience today, we'll be giving you a free Acer headset this summer. You'll be getting details in your email in June. And so with that, I want to say thank you. I look forward to all of the things you're going to create, and I look forward to meeting you downstairs. Please welcome the CEO of Scope AR, Scott Montgomery. Hi there. I'm Scott Montgomery, the CEO and co-founder of Scope AR. And we develop industrial augmented reality that puts knowledge where you need it. And six years ago, we chose to work with Unity because of its amazing plugin architecture. And I'm really, really glad that we did. This is a, a short clip of our first uh, publicly available demonstration. And it was uh, such an amazing response that we decided to build a business on it. So the reason we're so excited about augmented reality is it's really the, or the, the future UI paradigm. It's the culmination of a lot of technologies that are finally maturing. So the first is IoT, machines spitting out mil uh, uh, millions of machines spitting out trillions of transactions. And all of that data needs to be stored in the cloud in the form of big data, and then analyzed through machine learning and AI algorithms to finally deliver actionable information, intelligence, and instructions. And this is where AR comes in, showing you this information visually in a contextually relevant way. And you can interact with this data in the intuitive way we've always interacted with the world, with our hands and our eyes in three dimensions. So with this improved comprehension, we can enable all sorts of new methods of knowledge transmission, enabling on-demand knowledge. Imagine being in a remote location like the space station, where executing tasks Critically, or is critically important, and downtime can cost millions. It's impossible for an astronaut to be trained on every situation. So if something unexpected comes up, on-demand on -demand knowledge delivered through AR can be the solution. But there are barriers with mass adoption today. It's very expensive to create custom augmented reality experiences. You have to hire a dev team, and they can take weeks or months to create. So that means it's not scalable. And of course, there are new devices coming in the market all the time. So if you design something for a tablet today, it may not work on a wearable or whatever else comes in the next hardware cycle. We at Scope AR solve these problems. Worklink is an augmented reality authoring platform that allows you to easily create workflows. And for each step, add instructional data like text, audio, video, and 3D animations to be overlaid on top of real equipment as you work on it. With a simple animation editor, Adding these animations is as simple as drag and drop, and it's built for a, a subject matter expert. We kind of like to call this PowerPoint for augmented reality. So here are a few real-world examples of our products in use. With training, seeing the instructions allows students to understand and retain much more information than simply reading a textbook. And with maintenance, Instructions in AR are so intuitive that they can dramatically reduce the need for training, allowing workers to complete tasks safer and faster. 
Here a technician walks up to this circuit breaker, potentially having never seen it before. And with simple animations, it shows him exactly what he needs to do, and he's able to solve the problem rapidly. In manufacturing and construction, AR assembly instructions are so uh, simplify complex processes, increasing worker efficiency dramatically. We gave a framer a pair of HoloLens, and using WorkLink, showed him step by step how a room can be constructed. With no tape measure, no lasers, and no blueprints, he was able to construct this room and much faster than normal. So I'm really excited about the future of augmented reality in the enterprise, and I hope you are as well. Thanks very much. I'm Scott Montgomery from Scope AR. Please welcome from NASA JPL, Victor Luo. Hello? Okay. At NASA, exploration is in our DNA. From the furthest reaches of interstellar space, all the way down to the fragile ecosystem of our home planet Earth. With technologies like Unity and the VR AR platforms we've been discussing this morning, we're really pushing the limits of what it means to be an explorer. And as we go further and further into the cosmos, we'll need to design more capable machines to take us there. More complex systems than we've ever conceived, each with its unique risks and challenges. In order to reduce these risks and solve issues far before they ever arise, we decided to adopt VR and AR technologies to empower our spacecraft engineers earlier in the design process. Today, I want to show you a glimpse into just how we've been able to transform the way we design spacecraft. And for that, I'd like to bring up on the stage the project leader of space, Marty Vono. Here to show you Protospace which we've been building and using at JPL for the last two years. Protospace shows CAD models at full scale. Here we have the wheel of the next Mars rover currently under development. Protospace has been used for a number of NASA missions from proposal through design and assembly. Now I'd like to show you some of how Protospace works. Using hand gestures, I'll open the toolbox. We have tools to, for selection to move the model around and to change scale. We can also do section planes, and we can uh, move individual pieces of the model around. So I'll try to do that now. One of the most important uses for protospace is collaboration among our mechanical engineers. We often have up to 10 people wearing headsets, walking and talking around a virtual model. And for that, let's switch to the full rover model. And I'd like to invite Ben Riggs, rover mechanical systems engineer, to join us and tell you a little bit more about how protospace is being used in practice to design spacecraft. Thanks, Marty. How do you like our new Mars rover? Pretty cool, right? We're actually in fabrication right now. And as Marty mentioned, I'm currently an engineer working on the Mars 2020 project. My team designs, builds, and tests the rover mechanical hardware that we'll be sending to Mars in the summer of 2020. The protospace tool allows us to interact with the rover model in a natural, intuitive way while still collaborating with other folks in the room. Now I'd like to share one of our real world use cases with you today. In the final phase of the rover landing sequence, the rover is lowered from a descent stage with three nylon bridles. Once rover touchdown on the surface is detected, those three bridles are cut and the descent stage flies away. Now at that very instant, it's very important that those cut bridles don't drag or snag on any of the hardware on the top deck of the vehicle. The protospace tool has allowed the design team to enable a, in, to take a look at that geometry on the top deck of the vehicle and evaluate any potential problems with it so that we can correct it before the hardware is fabricated. Finding potential issues early in the design process is vital to the success of the project, and the protospace tool 
gives us just that opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Marty. What an awesome demo. Who would have thought that building and designing a 3D object is actually more effective in 3D space? As you can see, the future of protospace is bright. We can use it in the formulation, implementation, integration, testing, and operations for every single space mission. The technologies we've showcased here are also easily transferable to many different domains all across the industry. And we look forward to working with all of you to make that a reality. Thank you.